Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create a quick and easy bokeh blur effect in Photoshop. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. Here is the original image that we're going to be working with. And this is the effect that we're going to achieve on this image. And we're going to do it very, very easily in Photoshop. The best sort of image to choose for a bokeh effect like this is one that has plenty of night lights in it. And you want them at some distance away from the main subject of the image. Now I have this image already processed and opened in Photoshop. So I'm going to duplicate the background layer by just dragging and dropping it onto the new layer icon. And so this is the layer on which I'm going to create my bokeh. And I'm going to do that using Filter and then Blur Gallery. And I'm going to choose Field Blur. Field Blur opens this panel down here. And you can see that there's an Effect tab here. And that's for the bokeh effect. And there's also the Field Blur itself. And I just click so I actually set a pin for a Field Blur. So I'm just going to delete that so we can go back to our original image. There's another one there in the middle somewhere that I want to delete as well. So here's our original image. And if you could see my cursor really clearly, you'll see that it's got a sort of push pin icon with a plus sign. And what I'm going to do is put that down or pin that down in the places where I want that bokeh effect to be. So sort of around about this green and red sign here is a good start. And I'm going to put another one over here. You don't have to have multiples, but you can. I want to stay clear of this bus truck sort of thing here. And I want to stay clear of this foreground detail because I want those areas to be fully focused in a few minutes. So this is one of my field blur pins. Now I can adjust it here using this blur setting, or I can adjust it by just dragging on the pin itself. And I can drag around to increase or decrease the blur. It's the blur in the background with the lights that actually gives us our bokeh effect. So we're going to need some sort of blur here. And then we can come down here and start adding in our bokeh. Just going to drag on the light bokeh slider until I get an effect that I like. Now this is not rendering at high quality right now. So I'm just looking at this and getting an idea as to whether this is what I want. If I like that sort of amount of circular lights, then I can start adding in some color. And this will sample some of the colors from the image itself. And we get a much more colorful effect. And I think I want quite a bit of color in my bokeh effect here. And then we can set the light range. So this is how much of the light or tonal range in the image do we want the bokeh effect to be applied to. Now, from 0 to 255 is pretty much everything that is a light pixel has that sort of bokeh effect applied to it. I'm going to drag my light range back to something like, I've got about 177 here for this image. The other thing that I can do is I can drop it out of the very, very highlight area. So I can bring down the white slider here to keep that bokeh effect away from those. And so you may get a slightly different effect. You want to tweak these to suit yourself. Now I've just set one of these pins. I've got a second pin here. So I'm just going to click on it and just adjust it. So I might drop down my blur a little bit, make sure that that is to my liking. Now before I head back to Photoshop, I'm going to click on high quality because I want a high quality rendering. And then I'll click OK. I'm taken back to Photoshop and Photoshop is now rendering that blur and bokeh effect. So it will take a little while to do. And then once it's done, I can set about finessing my image. Now what I want to do is to get back the detail in the foreground. So the obvious thing is to select this topmost layer and click the Add Layer Mask icon. Because this allows me to now adjust this bokeh effect on the topmost layer to bring back some detail from the layer underneath. Now what I want to do here is to paint on the mask. Now I can do it in one of two ways. I'm going to show you both. First of all, I can just set the foreground color to black, grab a nice soft brush a nice soft brush here. And I can just go painting on the mask. And what I'm going to do is paint over those areas that I don't want this effect to be in. 
and that's going to bring back the detail in those areas of the image so that I'm effectively isolating this blur effect to the things that are in the sort of distance or middle distance. And I can paint however I like around here. Now that's one way that I can affect the interaction between this bokeh blur layer and the layer underneath, but there's another way too. Just going to discard this mask by dragging it onto the trash can and press delete to delete it. The other way I can do this is again by adding a mask, but this time using a gradient. So I'll tap on the gradient here, and the gradient that I want is the second one in. This is a foreground to transparent gradient, and the beauty of this is that it will build up. So with my mask selected, I'm just going to start dragging and watch what happens in the mask. Every time I drag, the gradient is filling that mask layer, but it's being added to what was already there. So I can just sort of come in to the areas where I want to see a little bit more detail and just drag out my mask. Now, because I'm working on a mask, I can also combine both of these processes. So if I like the effect with the gradient but want to fine tune it, then I'm just going to pick up my brush and just fine tune it in those areas that I think it needs a little bit of fine tuning. And that just lets me bring back a little bit of detail in some of these areas in the image where I want the effect to be a little less obvious. I want a bit of foreground detail. I want to isolate my blur and bokeh effect to the middle distance and the distance in this image. So there's how you can take advantage of the new field blur tool in Photoshop to get a bokeh effect on a nighttime image. Here's our before. And here's our after. It's a lot more exciting of a photo. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.